There's a possible breakthrough on the verge at the Minnesota State Capitol. The House and Senate are expected to vote on a compromise police reform bill. Esme Murphy's been at the Capitol all day. She joins us now. Uh, what's going on, Esme? Well, Frank, I can tell you this. Things change by the moment here at the Capitol, and at this very moment, it's not clear if that tentative deal is still moving forward on police reform or if perhaps it has run into trouble. We do know that all the major players, all the major players and leaders on both sides are still negotiating. Meanwhile, other parts of the legislative agenda, including the bonding bill, have apparently fallen apart. But there is still hope that police reform can be achieved in the aftermath of George Floyd's death. We never stopped working on this. News of the possible breakthrough came from Majority Leader Senator Paul Gazelka. At this point, uh, I would say that there is a tentative agreement, uh, but we are still working through the language. Another voice of optimism comes from the Democratic Majority Leader. We are working on final language for a police accountability and reform bill, and we hope to have that language available to caucus by 2 o'clock and to return to the floor at 3 approximately to pass it. Both sides have tentatively agreed to a ban on chokeholds and warrior training, agreed that officers should honor the sanctity of life, and that there is a duty for officers to intervene. They are also in favor of the creation of a 15-member advisory council that will report to the post board. We have just one advisory council that we agreed to that will be uh, under the, the post board, within the post board. It's a combination of citizens, legislators, and police officers. All sides have stressed that the deal is contingent on language agreements that could come apart at the last minute. But the outlook for police reform seems outright positive compared to the bleak future of the $1.35 billion infrastructure jobs and bonding bill. If a bonding bill doesn't happen tonight, it's not going to happen. The hang-up once again is the opposition of the Republican House minority to the governor's emergency COVID-19 powers. We believe that the legislature should have had an ability to weigh in on those executive orders over that four or five month period. Now, the bonding bill requires a supermajority in each house. Three-fifths of each house has to vote for it. That's why it's so difficult to pass. The police reform bill, on the other hand, requires only a simple majority. We were told all morning and all afternoon that there was a tentative deal. But the Minnesota House was supposed to be back at 3 o'clock debating that police reform bill. As you can tell, they are not back yet. Not quite sure yet what that means, Frank. Uh, no, I, and so keep us posted on that, but uh, whether it's bleak or dead on the bonding bill, what does that mean, Esme? Does that mean there might be another special session to try to resurrect that? Well, there more than likely will be another special session because in order for uh, Governor Walls to continue his emergency COVID-19 powers, he has to call a special session. But you heard the Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka say in that story that if it doesn't happen tonight, it's not going to happen. This is a $1.35 billion bill with hundreds of jobs projects for the entire state. And if they can't get it done now, they probably won't be getting it done this year. Okay, well, we'll check back with you at 6, Esme. As we can tell, things change quickly, so thank you. Sure and, of thing. course, stay with us. We'll have all the developments of this special session throughout the course of this late afternoon and evening.